In this video, we will talk about the island's pattern. Many coding interview problems involve traversing a matrix. The island's pattern describes all the efficient ways to traverse a matrix. Before jumping onto our first problem, let's talk about a matrix and how it can be represented in the programming language. A matrix is a collection of numbers arranged into a fixed number of rows and columns. The horizontal levels in a matrix form rows, while vertical levels form columns. If a matrix has m rows and n columns, then the number of elements in it will be m by n and is also called the order of the matrix. For example, the shown matrix has order 2 by 3. Hence has 6 elements. How is a matrix represented in computer? An array of arrays usually represents a matrix in a computer. For example, the above matrix can be represented as this. In this array, every subarray represents a row, hence the number of subarrays corresponds to the number of rows in the matrix. There are equal numbers of elements in the subarrays. And this number represents the number of columns in the matrix. How can we traverse a matrix? We can traverse an array representing a matrix by two indexes. The first index will represent its row number, and the second will represent its column number. For example, M12 will represent the element in row 1 and column 2. Due to this, a matrix is also called a 2D array or double index array. For a typical element MRC, there can be maximum of 8 neighboring or adjacent elements, and these can be accessed using these indexes. R-1, C, for accessing the upper element. R-1, C-1, for accessing the upper right element. R. C plus 1, for accessing the right element, R plus 1, C plus 1, for accessing the lower right element, and so on. In general, for any row R, R minus 1 is the index of its upper row and R plus 1 is the index of its lower row. Similarly, for column C, C minus 1 is the index of its left column and C plus 1 is the index of its right column. Let's jump onto our first problem to develop an understanding of this pattern. Given a 2D array that is a matrix containing only 1s representing lands and zeros representing water, count the number of islands in it. An island is a connected set of ones surrounded by either an edge or zeros. Each cell is considered connected to other cells horizontally or vertically, not diagonally. Let's understand this problem before moving further. Consider this matrix. If we start connecting ones horizontally and vertically, then all the ones are connected together. Hence there is only one island in this matrix. Consider another example. If we start connecting ones horizontally and vertically but not diagonally then we found that there are three such islands. How can we solve this problem? We can traverse the matrix linearly to find islands. Whenever we find a cell with the value 1, we have found an island. Using that cell as the root node, we will perform a breadth-first search or depth-first search to find all of its connected land cells. For the sake of this video, we will use depth-first search. During our traversal, we will find and mark all the horizontally and vertically connected land cells. We need to have a mechanism to mark each land cell to ensure that each land cell is visited only once. To mark a cell visited, we have two options. We can update the given input matrix. For example, whenever we see a 1, we will make it a 0. Or a separate Boolean matrix can be used to record whether or not each cell has been visited. For the sake of this video, we will mark each visited 1 with 0. By following the above algorithm, every time DFS or BFS is triggered, we are sure that we have found an island. We will keep a running count to calculate the total number of islands. Let's accumulate all these steps in the form of code. We are starting by calculating the number of rows and columns in the given matrix. As described earlier, the number of subarrays, equal to the length of the matrix, corresponds to the number of rows. While the number of elements in each subarray corresponds to the number of columns in the matrix. These number of rows and columns will be used to traverse the matrix. Also, we have initialized a variable total island with zero. This variable will keep the running count to calculate the total number of islands. Then we are starting to traverse a matrix linearly. The index i will give us the row number while index j will give us the column number. As soon as the element at ith row and jth column is found to be 1, it indicates the presence of an island. We will increase the total island's count by 1. To find all the adjacent ones to it, we are starting a depth first search by calling visit islands dfs function here. We are passing the reference of the matrix, row index, and column index to this function. In this function, for marking current 1 as visited, we are converting it to 0. To check all its horizontal and vertical neighbors, we are recursively calling the same function by passing the row index and column index of the right, lower, left, and upper elements. As this function is being used recursively, therefore it needs a base condition for stopping its working. There are two base conditions in this case. The first one is, if the row or column indexes go out of bounds then return. And the second is, if the element at particular row column indexes is found to be zero, then also return. When this depth first search has marked all the adjacent ones as zeros, these four loops will find the next element with a value of 1. 
remember all the ones adjacent to previously found ones have been converted to zeros by the previous depth first search. Therefore this newly found one will be the new island. We will increment the total island's count which now will become 2. Then we will start the depth first search again to find and mark all the adjacent ones to this newly found one. And so on. Finally, when the whole of the matrix has been traversed, we have number of islands in the total islands variable. Hence we are returning it here. Let's dry run this code on this matrix for better understanding. At index is 0, 0, the first one is found. Therefore the value of total islands is increment by 1. Then visit islands DFS is being called. The parameters passing to it are the reference of current matrix and the index is 0, 0. As neither these indexes are out of bounds, nor the current value is 0, therefore these two conditions are false at this moment. And the control will go the next statement. This statement, for marking the current cell as visited, converts this one to 0. Here the depth first search starts. The function visit islands DFS is being called for the indices 0, 1 to check the right neighboring element of it. The rest of the function's call will be executed on returning to this function. As these new indices are within the bounds, and the value here is not zero. Therefore this one will also mark as visited by converting it to zero. And its right neighbor will be checked for one by calling the same visit islands DFS with indexes zero and two. The rest of the calls will be made on returns. Here at the current indices, the value zero is found. This second if condition is true in this case. The function returns and the control will go to the body of the previous function which was processing the indexes zero one, which will now check its lower neighbor. The lower neighbor is 1. Therefore it will be marked as 0. As there are zeros at its right, below, and left, therefore these calls will simply return. The fourth call is an interesting one. As the value above it has been converted to 0 therefore it will also simply returns. If this value had not been converted to 0 then an infinite sequence of calls was initiated which resulted in the crash of the program. Then the function processing the index is 0 1 will check its left, and upper neighbors, and return to the function processing the value at 0 0 indexes. It will also search for the ones at its left and upper positions. After this, the control will go to the main function. Here the values of both i and j were zero before going into the depth first search function. These loops will continue traversing the matrix from indices 0, 1 for the next one. As some of the ones have been converted to zeros, therefore the next one will be found at indexes 1, 4. Then same steps will be repeated. Hope, now you have a better understanding of this pattern.